welcome to part two. In part one, we wrote our SQL query. Now we're going to actually write the PHP code to submit it to the database. So the first thing we want to do is connect to the database. I've written this separate PHP script that has all of our database connection information in it. So all I need to do is include that. I'll copy my include statement. And this PHP file that I'm including defines my variables, connects to the database, and verifies that the connection is valid. So that's our first step in communicating with the database. The next thing I need to do is get my information out of the, P or the HTML form. So I've called the start date start and the end date end. And so if I want to call them start and end again here, like I did in the PHP query, or in the SQL query, I can do that and call them, or assign them the values from post. So now we've stored our start and our end date as PHP variables separate from the post variable in our PHP script. Now these should be required. in our form so that we definitely get dates submitted to this script. Once I have my PHP variables defined, I'm ready to write my query. So my query is going to be exactly what we wrote in the previous video. ready to submit this query to the database. I'll use one of my other uh, scripts here to copy the code that I need, which looks like this. I'm going to store the results of my select statement in the variable, the PHP variable result. So this line of code, line 20, submits the query to the database. And then I'd like to verify that there were no errors when I submitted the query. So I'll copy this that checks for a MySQL error. And if there is one, it terminates and prints the error to the screen. So after I've checked for my SQL error, I check to see if any results were returned. So if there were no students, this select statement will have exactly zero rows. There will, be, there will be nothing in it. So if there were no students in the date range that was entered by the user, then there will be zero rows and results. And so I can just print zero results. However, if there are more than zero rows in result, then what I'd like to do is print this table. And so I can start with a HTML table tag, create a row in my table, and my first heading can be gender, and my second heading can be number of students. And now I will go through result one row at a time and I want to print out a row in my table and 
and the first thing in that row should be the gender. So I will concatenate on the row, let's say this is as gender. So I want to pull gender out of my select statement. I'll end that cell, start a new cell in my table for number of students. Number of students. And of course, this needs to be concatenated. So each row will have a cell with the gender and a cell with the number of students, then I would need to end the cell and end the row. So what is wrong here? I don't want to quote there. Quotes around these HTML tags. Then we have our PHP variable tags, or, or quotes around these HTML tags, PHP variable, quotes around these HTML tags, and that's the end of the row, and therefore the end of what I need in this while loop. After the while loop has completed, I can end the table. Then we finally close the connection and allow them to return to the home screen. This is a manager use case, so they want to go back to the manager home. So let's see. Connect to the database, pull our two post variables, define our query, submit our query, check for errors. If there are no errors, print each row of the results in a table. If there are no results, tell the user there were zero results. Close the database connection, and that's it. So we'll save our two files and test this out. gender-report.html on localhost. I have already gone into my database and entered a bunch of session information for December. So I'm going to start and end December 2016 and try and generate the report. All right, we found an error. Time to go to our PHP error log. That was our exactly our problem. I forgot a semicolon at the end of this line, so I will save again. And I will click Generate Report, and I see six males and four females. If I enter my database, and Select all from tutoring session where date of session is between December 1st, 2016 and December 31st, 2016. But not all them have a student. In fact, only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 have students. So if I alter this query to show and student ID is not null, now I see the 10 that are getting counted. So these student IDs correspond to students 
and presumably six of them are men and four of them are women. And we could try joining these two tables. Uh, so let's just see date of session and student first name and student gender from tutoring session as S and student where the date is between here, the tutoring session student ID is not null, the tutoring session student ID is equal to the student student ID. There's my implicit join and that should be it. So now I'm just looking at the ten, same 10 results but only looking at the date to make sure I'm still getting the right dates, my first names and my genders. And so there are six men and four females. So it appears that everything is working Properly. Excellent. Well, this is an example of how to submit a select query for a report in PHP, process the results, and display them in a nice little table.